Well, we are diving into the world of coding here in uh, Burlington today, and maybe you're, maybe you're like me. I know the word coding. Um, I don't know how to code, but I guess that's why we're here. And there's a few kids that are here that can probably tell me a thing or two about coding. But first up, we got uh, we have Aaron, because this is Code Ninjas. I should say the name because that's really important. <laughs> code Ninjas, very right? important. Uh, code Ninjas in uh, in Burlington. Aaron, but you're from the St. Catharines location. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm from uh, St. Catharines, Code Ninja St. Catharines, yeah. So that's cool to see the different centers get along and help each other out. Very much. I think that's one of the main cultures that we've tried to try to grow. Uh, so St. Catharines, Burlington, Oakville, Milton, we've all kind of come together, helped each other out and tried to build together. Okay. Code Ninjas, what is it? So Code Ninjas is amazing. Code Ninjas is a place where we teach the fundamentals of coding, computer programming in a fun way, in an exciting way. Uh, we actually teach it by harnessing the affinity that kids have with computers and more importantly, video games. We teach them how to code by having them build their own video games. Because, okay. Should we start with coding? Because there's a lot of people right now that exactly that means. They know that word, yeah. but what is coding? Is, right. it, is it a language? Is it a computer language? How do you describe That's it? That's exactly it. It's, it's how we talk to computers, how we, how we communicate with those computers. So it's a language, it's a literary piece, um, and it's an important literary piece. Uh, coding, uh, about 15, 20 years ago, was maybe used in a one stream field of maybe being tech, uh, a developer, a programmer, but now it's opened up. Uh, coding is everywhere, whether in the arts, in medicine, in construction, in commerce. Anywhere you look, there's going to be coding involved. What's the ninja part to the code? So what's really nice is that uh, coding was developed about five years ago, and uh, our CEO had children in uh, martial arts. And the martial arts, one of the main components of martial arts is that proof of concept, the short-term goal of having a belt and earning that next belt, and then that long-term goal of hitting that coveted black belt. Um, and so what we do with Code Ninjas is actually we have that belt system and we embrace that martial arts. So our students are ninjas, our senseis are our instructors, and our classroom's actually called the dojo. The do so we're in the dojo right now. We're in right the now. dojo right now, right? Yeah. We got, So we got three students. We got a, we got a manual working with one of your sensors. That's right. Senseis, uh, Caitlin. Uh, we got Caitlin, who's working away here. We got Toby. Thanks for coming, guys. What? But th I was going to say, the thing is, I concern with my kids is even like screen time. Right? They already have enough screen time. Why do you want them sitting in front of a screen more? Very much so. So I have, I have two boys at home as well, yeah. and it's, it's the same thing as well. What we try to tell parents is that we use that term productive screen time. So we already know that kids are going to use screen time. They use it at school. They use it at home. This yeah. is their world. This is what they came through. So why don't we actually use that to our advantage and make it productive? So we, say, we tell parents that, yes, your kid may be playing video games at home, but here at Code Ninjas, we put them behind the screen. Cool. OK, uh, let's take a break, because we're going to spend the morning here, because uh, you're going to put me to the test. Absolutely. Okay, let's do, let's do a little bit of coding. Does that sound, do you think they could teach me, Kaylin? You think they could teach me? <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this, this, the shoulder str sh shrug, shrug <laughs> is uh, something I get for my kids, too. So I don't understand that. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dive into it and, and learn more. Maybe we can bu build something when we come back to uh, Code Ninjas in Burlington on Morning Life. Uh, so I wouldn't describe myself as technologically illiterate, but it's definitely not one of my strengths. However, today I am trying to build on some of those technology skills here at uh, Code Ninjas in Burlington. One of how many different centers? There's your from St. Catharines. This is uh, Aaron, everybody. St. Catharines. So Aaron, so St. Catharines, Burlington, Milton, Oakville. And there's right. some in the GTA, too. Yeah, right? absolutely. There's about 25 across Canada. 25 right? across yeah. Canada. Yeah. Started in the U.S.? Started in the U.S. in uh, Houston. In Houston, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's bringing that, it kids. What's the, what's the ages we're looking for here? We're looking at around 7 to 14. Uh, 7 to 14, kids as young as 7 years old are going to be building their own video games. And in turn, learning those fundamental skills, learning the fundamental coding programming skills. Why video games? So kids love video games. They have that affinity to it. I have two boys at home that love video games. So um, I have a background in computer science. I was not taught this way. I wish I was. Uh, but I was taught by tens and thousands of lines of code, and maybe something cool might happen. 
So what we did is we said, hey, you know what? Let's have these kids build video games. Let them have them build video games and in turn learn key concepts in that programming language. And like Caitlin is building her own video game that then she can actually play. So that's that's, that's back to that productive screen time. Well, that the we were productive about. screen time, yeah, absolutely. And one of the cool things that we offer is this parent portal. The parent portal actually allows our parents to play the games that Caitlin has. So any games that she builds here in the dojo, the parents actually get to play the games at home. So not only is Caitlin playing video games at home now, she's playing video games that she made at home. Can we go to the whiteboard? Let's go let's to the go, whiteboard. Let's go to the okay, let's get some, some basics. Okay, Absolutely. For, for somebody like me or anybody else at home. Basics of coding. Absolutely. So, so Ninja Tim comes into the dojo. It's his first time coming into the dojo. We say, you know what? Tim, you, you like video games? Sure. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So we're going to start you off in the fundamentals. We're going to use something called block coding. Now, block coding looks really nice. It's very visually appealing. And what it is, it's a graphical interpretation of a language called JavaScript. All right, so what we do is kids as young as seven years old will see these colors, see that the blocks and the colors actually mean something. Some colors mean a variable. Rather than seeing that. Rather than seeing this, right? These two pieces actually do the same thing, right? We will eventually teach our kids this. The three ninjas that you see in the dojo right now are actually using JavaScript, but we started with blocks so that when they realize the concepts, they were actually able to start writing the code and saying, oh, you know what, that was like the block that I used before. Python? Python is another intermediate language that, uh, yeah. that is a, another language, a C sharp, a bunch of different languages just like in any literacy component. And back to the dojo, because that's what this is called, right. and it's all about belts. And they're Absolutely. not wearing belts around them, no. they're wearing... We got this, so it's belts. really cool and in, in, a, in a tech way as well, which is great. We have these silicon bracelets, right? And what's really neat is that there's actually an RFID chip in there. So there's an RF, RFID chip in there, and the kids actually sign in to the dojo with this, right? Cool. So we have our three ninjas. They show up on the screen there. Right. It says how much time they have left. What's neat, it goes from white belt to black belt, so we have that progression. Cool. Okay, let's take another break, because um, kids can pop in whenever they want, and we'll get into that a little bit more. There's no scheduled time, especially with COVID, too, so we'll go through some, some of the COVID stuff. We'll talk to Ian and like, the relations between schools and Code Ninjas and coding in general when we come back to Code Ninjas. Welcome back to the dojo here at uh, Code Ninjas <laughs> in, uh, in Burlington. We were chatting with Aaron, who's from uh, the St. Catharines uh, location, but we got Ian. Hey. This is yours. Good right? morning. This is good morning. Good morning. Welcome. How are you, pal? Great. Good to see great. you, man. Great day. How'd you dive into this world of Code Ninjas? How'd oh, you guys get it was, here? It was so great. So my, yeah. our son came home from school one day, and he was excited. He's like, Dad, Dad, look what we learned today. And he's got, the, and they introduced him to coding. So our, my wife and I were like, hey, this is interesting. He's into something. He loves it. Yeah. He's not really that sports kid. Right. And maybe this is his thing. Did you have any experience with coding? Do you know much about yeah, it? A little bit. I mean, I'm probably as old as you, probably older than you. Yeah. And I was back in the day with cards, where they had to use cards to program the computer. So that was my introduction to coding back in university. But there's and a connection to you with education in the schools, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So wh wh are we teaching coding in schools? Where are we at with that? That is a great question. So on June 22nd, the Ontario, the Ministry of Education released uh, updates to the math curriculum and they introduced coding as part of the curriculum. So coding is, do teachers know how to code though? That's, okay, this so is, some, yeah, and that's a great to, question. So we'll go over the, here. To the whiteboard. To the yeah. whiteboard, just like a teacher would do it. <laughs> yeah. so, so the teachers, we've talked to teachers and it is kind of that black box where they, I know what coding is, but not really, how do I use it, what do I do? So the curriculum is outlined and it's very general in what is actually in the curriculum. Right. And so one of the challenges for teachers is A, what is coding? Yeah. And then how do I integrate that into my curriculum? We've talked to some teachers, and some teachers are like, you know what would be beautiful, Ian, is if there's some way to integrate coding in other areas of curriculum. How can I integrate this not only into math, but into social studies or into art? Okay. So we've talked to a lot of teachers about it. We actually hosted a number of intro to code sessions over the summer, and we had 60 teachers sign up right away and fill all our spots up just to get kind of break in, like what does it mean and how could it look like? What do you guys set up here for us? So this is great, so this is grade five, my son's in grade five, he's right. at home, he's looking for a protractor because they gotta learn angles. Okay. So we all remember the old days where it's like, well this is a right angle, that means it's 90 degrees. What does that mean? Well it's moving from this spot to this spot and that's the way we used to learn it. And they probably still do that, don't yeah. get me wrong, and that's great. But how great would it be now if they could integrate video games into learning those angles? So now I've got Cody here who's gotta get through the maze, kids. What angle does he have to move at to start? Well, he's got to move 90 degrees to start his journey down through the maze. So it's a much more interactive, exciting way for the kids to learn. So again, that's, so 
because computers in schools, they have them, but that's, that could be an issue, but it's not always on the computer. You can be teaching on the whiteboard too. Absolutely, like this, this example right here. It'd be more fun, I think the kids would enjoy getting onto their Chromebooks and learning it, but hey, if I'm a teacher, I don't need a Chromebook to teach them coding. Kay. I can teach them with stuff that I can put on my whiteboard and things I can draw. Nice. Uh, I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. We'll take a break, I'll come back. Aaron, you want to teach me a thing or two? Let's put, <laughs> <laughs> let's put something together. Let's see if we could do it here at, uh, at Code Ninjas in Burlington. But as we've been saying, there's a number of different dojos or centers around the region, and it's easy. You, you just can pop in and uh, give it a try. Bring the kids from ages seven to fourteen. Fourteen? Yeah. We'll continue on Morning Live. Hey, morning, everybody. We've had uh, a really cool morning here at uh, Code Ninjas in Burlington. We got uh, three students are ninjas along with the senseis and we're in the dojo and I'm actually, uh, I'm skipping past actually <laughs> building my game and just, I don't know, uh, just playing a game of Pong back with uh, Aaron who heads up the, uh, the St. Catharines uh, location. But now we're going to show you how I can build this, this game of Pong. You're going to build, you're going to build a Pong game today, Tim. Okay, so step one is what? So we're going to go through, so this is what um, our fundamental students see. We're going to go to the first block. This is our GDP, our game development platform. So you'll see on the left hand side, we have our toolbox of different uh, blocks, our workspace, and then our actual game. Okay. So what we're going to need to do is move the ball today. So I'm going to get you, you can see the, the two blocks there. You're going to yep. click and drag it into our loop. All right. Now what that does, as soon as, you, yep, as soon as you let go, perfect. What that's going to do is that it's going to loop forever, it's going to move the ball, and if it touches an edge, it's going to bounce. So what we're going to do is test it out. If you look there, you can hit the green flag, okay. and there you go, you made a little bouncing ball. Perfect. All right, so let's stop that by hitting the stop sign. Okay. And stop. with the magic of technology, we're going to warp ahead to move the, uh, the paddle. So if you click on the green, okay. you'll see that the paddle doesn't move. The ball's bouncing around, the paddle doesn't move. We need to figure out how to relate that paddle okay. to our mouse. So we're going to stop the game again. Yeah. You're going to grab that mouse, and you say mouse X. Now I'm going to set my X value, my left and right value of that paddle. You're going to put it up where the zero is. Yep. And now when you hit the green button, you can move that mouse around. Awesome. Pretty cool, right? So again, the block coding, it translates to actual JavaScript language, but we're letting it be the concept before the language. So let's stop that game. So is right. there always a sensei with the, a student? Absolutely. So it's not one-on-one, -on -one, right. right? It's self-paced, not self-taught, okay. right? So we have this area here. We have Emmanuel working with our sensei. Um, but what's really good is that they work at their own pace. Yeah. And uh, if they need help, hand goes up and we jump right, right in. in there. So what's really neat about coding okay. is that you can make it whatever you want. So if we go to that final stage, we have one for you. <laughs> um, if you hit play, and uh, I don't know if you <laughs> notice. <laughs> well done. Oh, no, I think. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right, and you let it hit there. <laughs> ah, that's a good one to end off on. Cool. Um, okay, who, like, 7 to 14, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the age you're looking at. Absolutely. For, for, like, what's the common questions you get from parents? So we have parents about the length of their journey, right? We go from white belt to black belt. How does that feel? Well, that's going to be different between each ninja, just like in martial arts. It depends on how they prove their concept and their knowledge of concept. They're going to go from white belt to black belt. In black belt, they're actually going to be building or creating an app that we publish on the App Store or Google Play Store. Uh, quickly, jobs yeah. coming out of this? Like, like the future of coding? You, you pick it. You pick whatever you want. Any job that comes in, any of those big names coming through, like Ian alluded to before, yeah. is that um, any of the commerce, sports teams, uh, tech companies, engineering, you have engineer, anything, okay. anything you have, absolutely. Uh, really neat. Hopefully we just, hope for you at home, there's a whole lot more to know, but we're only here for a short time to give you just kind of some interest in there's St. Catharines, here in Burlington, Milton, Oakville. That's right. Loco locations everywhere. Ian, thanks, buddy. Toby, thanks. Kaylin. That's right. Emmanuel. Caitlin. <laughs> Code Ninjas. I'm Morning Life.